Welcome to the end of Mechanical Statics, MT-126 in the Mechanical Engineering Technology Program at MVCC. These are the final exam solutions for Spring 2012. The first problem was a shear force bending moment diagram that looks something like this. P1 here was 150 pounds. And P2 was 80 pounds. And the distributed load was 15 pounds per inch. Now, the horizontal distances are marked in inches here, as you can see. And the first step for our shear force bending moment diagram, after uh, identifying the loads and sketching the beam, is to find the reactions at A and B in this case. So we have our moments about point A. They equal zero. And we have the absolute value of 150 pounds times 10 inches. And that's clockwise direction. So we see that this is going this way. So that makes it negative. And we're adding 15 pounds per inch. And that goes from 20 to 36, so that's 16 inches. And its centroid is down the middle here, about 8 inches from 30, the 36 point. And 8 inches from 20. And that's also going in a clockwise direction about point A. So that's 8 inches there and then another 20. So we're multiplying that times 28 inches. Then we add 80 pounds times 45 inches. And that's also going in a clockwise direction, just like the other two. And then we add in, there's that clockwise. Then we add in B in the Y direction times 36 inches. And we're assuming it's going positive, so it ends up going in a counterclockwise direction. So we assume that it's positive. And then solving our equation for by, by equals 328 and a third pounds. Could have done point 0.3 as well. Then we take the moments about point B. They have to equal zero. And 
through similar means, we find out that AY equals 141 and two-thirds pounds. And to check, we take the forces in the y direction. We add them up. And we've got 150 down. Uh, this ends up actually being uh, 15 times 16 is 240 pounds total load there, and then 80 pounds. So that's 390, 470, and then we add up these two that are positive. 141 plus 328 is 469, then the two-thirds and the one-third add up to one, so that's 470 pounds. So all of that checks, which is great. All right. Now we need to work on the shear force and bending moment diagrams. And they will end up looking something like this. Using MD solids, we enter all that information in, and we have a constant shear force going from point A to 10 inches. Then P1, which is 150 pounds down, brings it down to negative 8.3 pounds. There's no loads here, so it's constant shear force at this point. Then the distributed load changes the shear force consistently over time. Its total load is 240 pounds, so we reduce this from eight, negative 8.3 to negative 248.3 pounds. But then we have the reaction at B, which brings us back up to 80 pounds. Then there's no load here, so we have a consistent shear force here till we reach the very end where the applied load of 80 pounds brings it back down to zero. For the bending moment diagram, this constant value means we will have a constant slope for the bending moment, bringing all the way up to 118.1 foot-pounds. On our diagram, it will look the same, except it will be in inch-pounds. Then bring it down here, because we have a negative value on the shear force diagram, it will have a negative slope on the bending moment diagram. It's a relatively small value here, so we'll have a relatively small slope and small difference here. As that value gets more and more negative, this slope becomes more and more negative. Bending down and reaching to negative 60 foot-pounds. Then we have a constant shear force here, and it's positive, so our bending moment will start going back up again at a constant slope. If you decide to do the rework, I would expect to see all of the calculations that are required to get to these values. This bending moment diagram should be in inch-pounds will be easier that way.